Well, we're happy to have Price Headley here. Uh, we've known him for a while, mm -hmm. miss him, haven't been able to see him with all the quarantine stuff going on. Yeah. Our events we miss, but um, you know, he was inducted into the Traders Hall of Fame in 2007. He's the founder of BigTrends.com. He you may recognize him. He appears regularly on CNBC, Fox News, and Bloomberg Television, and in a variety of print and online financial news outlet. So we're super happy to have him here with us today. He's going to talk today about how to trade a small account with $1 options and how to adapt in today's highly volatile markets, uh, advantage of using low cost options to trade breakouts and an aggressive strategy for potential of 100 to 300% plus gains. So we got Price in with us today. Yes. Hi, Nikki. How are you? Hi, Pat. Hey. Hi, Raleigh. Hi, Hi Jeanette. Hey, Hi, Price. How are you? <laughs> Great to see you. I'm super. How about you? Great. We're delighted to have you here with us, my friend. Fantastic. Let me share hey, my Price. screen. Hey, Price. Thanks for coming. Hey, Jeanette. Thank you for Hi, all Price. for having me. Let me make sure the share is okay. Uh, looks great. Yeah, Beautiful. Let's get to it. All right. We ready to roll? Yeah. We're ready to all roll, right. my friend. Well, thank you all so much for having me. It's really a pleasure to be with you all. And I know you all have just done a great job on a fantastic multi-day event. I'm sure people are well loaded with lots of great information and strategies. So I'm going to try to try to help you finish strong on option strategies today, folks, and focus on how you can trade a small account or a big one. But a lot of people ask us about small accounts, so I wanted to talk about that today with $1 options. These are options that are quoted at a buck or less, which means that you would never commit more than 100 bucks to control 100 shares of stock. Uh, so you can start small and then build up as you go. I'm just going to remind you too, folks, that as uh, I share a lot of what I've learned in 30 years of trading uh, stocks and options with you today, nothing that I talk about here should be considered a specific recommendation or buy or sell any particular investment. Of course, you know that you are 100% responsible for your own investments. Our job at Big Trends is to empower you to make better decisions in the heat of battle. But not all Big Trends products and services are appropriate for all traders and investors. What I'm sharing with you is a, is a simple strategy, buying calls or buying puts, but it isn't my most aggressive strategy. Higher risk, but much higher reward. So keep that in mind. And uh, at Big Trends, we don't provide personalized financial tax or legal advice. What we do is we take our alert signals in real time out to our Grand Sam Options customers that I'm going to tell you about today uh, via real-time email, and you can get it real-time texted to your smartphone uh, on entries and also always on exits. We never leave you hanging. So it's a baseball analogy. You know, in this pandemic, uh, incredible year that is 2020, you know, baseball season has been affected like everything else, but the analogy still fits, which is that we're not going for singles here, folks. We're not just trying to get on first base. We're trying to get much bigger returns of ultimately home run or grand slam potential when you load the bases, get four quick runs at once. In the baseball analogy, that's like getting a big score in your portfolio. What I want to get at least is a double. That's a plus 100 percent in uh in trading terminology and when i can get a double on any trade whether it's a stock or an option my first rule of thumb is sell half of it folks take your risk capital off the table and basically create what we call a free trade you know if you started with a thousand bucks and now it's worth two thousand you take that original thousand back in your pocket and then you you still let the rest of it ride to have the potential to get bigger gains but if it doesn't go you don't worry about it because you basically already have zero risk in that trade once you all half at a double. The next target is a triple up here, 200%. Third base in baseball terms is, is a triple, and that's 200% return on your money. We sell half of our remaining uh, position at plus 200 when we can get it, and when we can get it for the final target plus 300%, we say thank you very much. It could go on to even more than that, but we don't want to uh, worry any more about it at that point. We saw our final piece of our position at that four bagger. That's the the true grand slam opportunity. And, and what I want to talk to you about today are a few indicators that help us point the way. I know some people that say they just like to trade price action, but my experience with just trading price action is you get whipped a lot. You need a neck brace, especially you see how, how volatile the markets are today. We were due for a shakedown. We're getting a, a, a dramatic sell-off in the markets today after an incredible run to the upside. So a big part of this is knowing how 
how you manage your portfolio amid this volatility. We're going to talk about why these cheap options are a great way to get exposure, but not have to go sink a ton of money into the stock market at any one time. So you really can control your risk. So how would you have done if you followed our model portfolio since inception, the beginning of 2017? So here we are, you know, not uh, whether we're three and three quarter, not quite three, three and two thirds of the way, uh, three and three two thirds years, you can see we've got $30,794 in total profits accrued before commissions, which as you know, commissions are now next to nothing for option trades. And this is saying we never put more than a thousand bucks into any one trade. So you start with the $10,000 model portfolio, you'd be up to 40,000 and change. That's 30,000 plus in profits over that uh, roughly 40, four months that we've uh, so far got under the belt here uh, through the end of August. So the key is, okay, past performance doesn't guarantee future results. We all know that. So I'm not making a claim it's going to be uh, the same going forward. It could be better. It could be worse. But the reality is we think we're always getting better all the time and always looking to find fresh opportunities for our Grand Slam subscribers that we call it these real-time entries and exits for you. So let's look at some case study examples and walk you through a lot of the lessons I've learned uh, in, in at least give you the core lessons that you need to learn to make sure you buy at the right time and exit at the right time with this strategy. And we call them out in real time for our Grand Sam subscribers. Now, the, what we're going to talk about are three indicators here. And you'll see them in sometimes different colors on here, but the blue one is what's called the CCI. It's a commodity channel index. Why are we using it on AMD stock when it's called a commodity channel index? Because I've tested it to work with a lot of big name growth stocks. It works great on big tech leaders, biotech, healthcare, and growth names that have a trend in motion that's what we're after. But you, what you've got to be careful of is when you see it go into a first overbought setup, the question is what happens after that setup? That's CCI going overbought and not falling through. It's the same thing with the percent R, which is this next panel down. You see percent R, that's Larry Williams percent range indicator. Percent R says it should be the top of the range there. If it, if it stops there, like this one did, it is the top of the range. But when these things start lining up, the, the green line down here is the ADX. We're going to cover a lot of these charts, so I'll keep telling you about what each of these indicators means as we share with you multiple examples here. When it doesn't confirm, I put an X on it, it's not going to be a signal. When it does confirm, you see CCI and percent R both going over bought a little bit later on AMD. This is back, uh, you can see in late July, AMD is setting up there. The first day after that, it did not close above there. So you do you turn off the signal? No, because it's staying over bought. And then look what happens. The second Second day after that overbought signal, it's go time at the close right there. This is a daily chart, so you don't have to worry about micro intraday missing an alert. We focus on typically the next morning getting you the trade alert to take advantage of it as we get the day started. This next bar here, this is where we're buying right there. Actually, technically, uh, at that at the top of that red bar, we were wrong on that first day. Anybody that tells you they're right all the time, you know, and doesn't tell you about how to manage when you're wrong is, is basically not telling you about reality. You've got to focus on, okay, what do we do if we're wrong at first? My first rule of thumb is give it some time with these aggressive options. And my, the time that I give it, we're buying about a month out on these options. This one had about, uh, you can see, uh, about four weeks to go before the expiration uh, in mid-August, just hit on August 21st. We were in and out in two days. So we were in there uh, July 23rd. We're out there by that next uh, Monday, the 27th. So you can see here two trading days that we're saying, okay, we're buying it at, at 62. It drops down to about 59. We're down about 30% that first day on these aggressive options. You have to have the stomach to, to ride out sometimes some volatility for a day or two. And then you see what happens. The next day, we're taking a double and a triple. 100 and 200 percent hit when it shoots up here from 60 to 70 that next day. AMD, as you know, a big chip stock, a uh, major uh, winner in the S&P 500 over the last several years. Uh, great comeback story, actually, uh, for AMD kind of overtaking Intel in a lot of ways is that, you know, okay, this thing can move fast. So we know it's, we're buying an August 75 call, by the way, folks, when, when the stock was trading there in, in the 62 range. Why would we buy something that's uh, about 20% out of the money? Because that's how far we had to go out of the money to buy it at a buck, uh, to, to buy a $1 option. The question becomes, based on our testing, do we think it can get there to 75 or higher in a short period of time? And I'm going to try to pick up some questions towards the end here. So I'll have uh, Raleigh help me with some of the questions that folks are asking. Pop them in there, but we'll get them towards the end because i got so much I want to share with you over this hour. Uh, and it's hard to pack 30 years of knowledge into an hour, but I'm going to try to get a lot of key insights for you to really start taking advantage of this 
perfect market for uh, sh s these really cheap options to be traded in because it's just swinging so dramatically. So when we when we bought it at a buck, that means you and our model portfolio, we're buying 10 contracts for 100 bucks a piece. That means we're controlling 1,000 shares of AMD. 1,000 shares, if you par purchase it at 62 bucks a share, 62 grand, we're controlling $62,000 worth of the stock for 1,000 bucks. That's where your leverage is coming, folks, where you're basically saying that's like 60 to one leverage. And you can see the stock makes... Uh, here about a you know about a 15% uh, move and there's uh, our double and our triple being hit and then the next morning that next Monday morning it popped up to about 72 that was our quadruple the 300% profit um, we're out of that trade this was we're out before earnings we're out before any potential other uh, strange things can happen or a day like today happens and you're on the wrong side if you own calls coming into today and tech stocks you're probably not too happy right now if you've been sitting writing those down we don't have to worry about that in and out in a couple of days hit it quick ADX is the other piece of the puzzle that's the trend confirmation that's you want to see that green line rising that's the average directional movement we're going to get into that too now when i think of home runs in the baseball analogy i think of babe ruth as the iconic figure for the greatest home run hitter of his era i remember watching hank aaron in the 70s with, watch with my dad when he hit his 715th to beat the babe's record uh but bottom line is that you know a couple of great sluggers there but you know what when you're slugging for home runs the babe had almost twice as many strikeouts as he had home runs now we don't want to have twice as many big strikeouts but we're going to have some losers along the way and one of the, the ways that i can manage not missing too big is saying give these trades five trading days to play out if they don't if they're not profitable after five days we usually still have a few weeks left to go we blow them out based on what i call a time stop to, to minimize the risk of completely blowing up on a trade. But you know what? Sometimes we still will hit a total, uh, uh, total give back, a total strikeout on a trade from time to time. So the key is never overcommit your capital. So I'm going to talk about that too, because nobody likes to, to miss big. But the reality is you're going to have some misses on any strategy. The key is I see this, this four-letter word here. The worst four-letter word in trading, believe it or not, is F-E-A-R, fear. You know, some people call fear false evidence appearing real. I see a lot of traders who these days are so struck by fear that they can't pull the trigger on a trade, that they don't know how to take advantage of the opportunities that are right in front of each and every one of us in the markets every single day. I think it's great that you all have been here through these uh, three days of great training because the idea is, you know what, it's about uh, reducing your fear to a point where you can take action on a small basis and scale up. That's why I love this strategy too, because look, for you could trade one contract for a hundred for 100 bucks or less, you can get exposure to these ideas that can double, triple, quadruple in a matter of days and, and not have that much at, at risk on any one trade. So it's a great way to start small and not miss so big. I don't like to miss big. The babe did, but I do like to hit big and I like to man manage the risk along the way. So we're going to talk more about not just making money, but also uh, managing risk through all this. Another one, you know, in this pandemic that we've all had to live through here in the last six plus months, uh, is and, and, and going on, you know, the markets have been just amazing the way they, they bounce back. But the reality is you've got to be flexible here with the volatility that's coming ahead of an election, ahead of, uh, you know, obviously a very overbought market. Is say we, we look for opportunities like AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca, you know, one of the big drug names partner with Oxford University, and we got a piece of it back here in mid-July where we saw that the news was just starting to pop that AstraZeneca was going to report some of their results the following week. And so we don't worry about when you, we miss the first leg of a breakout. You can see one of the things I'm also going to teach you about is these bands here. They're called big trends bands. When it's stuck in between those big trends bands, it's another way to kind of say it's, it's not trending, it's in a range. I don't want to try to scalp that. A lot of traders make the mistake of scalping for smaller gains and hoping they can have smaller losses, but then they get stuck in a trade that basically they scalped the wrong direction or say you were betting on the top of this range holding and you think you're starting to make some money and you're waiting for it to come to the bottom of the range. Then you get caught in this gap up here. You know, that's where you say, okay, you want to be getting on in that gap up, not getting burned when it goes against you and the trading range turned into an uptrend. So the key is, okay, then we're getting a signal to get a piece of this as it breaks out and closes outside of that band here. And so we know we need to be on AZN. You can see we're getting into that. And then over the next several days, 
you know, one, two, and three days later, we're cashing in. That third morning when it popped up there, that was a Monday morning right here. We were saying lock in the rest of your final profit. It ended up being on that pop up more than 300%. Sometimes those gaps work real nice in our favor. Say, okay, you get a gap above your target, take it and run. Don't say, oh, this must be bigger and keep trying to ride for an even bigger gain. Take that money and run. You can see glad we did as it shot back down after we were out of the trade. So a big part of this is being proactive to take money gradually remember only half at a double i know a lot of traders with that fear holding that, that's holding you back are going oh i make 20 or 30 percent i take my profit and that's where you're going to really mess yourself up on this strategy because you know what if you're taking small gains and then not taking medium to to bigger losses when we do lose you can't you can't make that work as a strategy you need these outsized gains that will carry you and those home runs are really how you win the game in this more aggressive form of trading now we talk about the indicators commodity channel index Donald Lambert developed this in the early 1980s to work with commodities, but I've since tested to work on a lot of growth securities. So whether you look at Apple or the FANG stocks or you know, um, you know, Tesla or whatever you want to look at, you'll see the CCI in this pattern that I'm teaching about today has to fit to get you to, sh to show you a truly big trend. Um, and big trends can happen, by the way, folks, on any time frame. It doesn't have to be over a multi-year perspective. I can do it on a 30-minute chart and catch it for the next two days. So the key is, okay, we're, we're trying to catch it on a quick, uh, quick speed kind of a move where the speed of movement far eclipses the time you lose while you're holding an option. Now, the CCI is different from a lot of other indicators because it doesn't just look at closes, like say a moving average, it just averages out closes. Um, we're looking at high plus low plus close divided by three gives what Donald Lambert called a typical price. And why is that important? Because if something's closing at the highs all the time, that shows you a lot of positive movement and a lot of positive momentum. This is a momentum indicator. If it's closing near the lows, it tells you, hey, the institutions and everybody's dumping this thing headed into the close. Finishing near the lows, not a good sign on this indicator. And then you add it up over a lot of different look back periods to get your generalized uptrend or downtrend momentum indicator. The key lesson that you'll learn from me through these indicators you're looking at today is that don't misunderstand when I say overbought that overbought has to be bad. Everybody thinks that overbought means it's gone too far, it must come back down. But actually, in my experience, the best uptrends are where it goes overbought and stays overbought. How many times have you seen something where you thought something was overbought, it had to come back down, it just kept cruising on up. And you go, why is this thing keep going up? because of this folks when the institutions want to buy something they can't buy it all in one day if you're moving around billions and billions of dollars um that you know that they're the ones who are driving the market we all know that well when they want to get into a position they've got to steadily build that position over typically many days because if if they tried to buy their billions of dollars worth of stock all at once it'd be like the 800 pound gorilla splashing all the water out of the pool you know it would be something where uh, you know, they, they would be too noticed, they would pay too high of a price. So they gradually build up or gradually work out of positions as well. Same thing on an oversold situation. If they're selling out, selling out day after day, they know bad news is coming. You, you want to not be fighting that. You want to say, hey, there's some bad news coming. Maybe, maybe we can make some money when it does have that ultimate gap down. So I don't know about you, but I believe that institutions know more than the typical individual and that we want to be piggybacking their behavior to follow along in the good stories and get rid of, get out of the bad stories or, or more, more often profit from the bad stories. One of the most amazing things during the, the really pandemic uh, stock market dramatically affected month of March on the downside uh, you know, where the stock market lost about a third of its value that late February to March 23rd low is that we made money in March on our portfolio for Grand Slam. And you would think, well, you must have made money on puts. But the irony was some of our best profits came from Kroger as a call trade, betting on Kroger on the upside as a pandemic play, you know, back when nobody could get any toilet paper, uh, you know, it was like, okay, a situation where you saw that the, 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 the raid of the stores like Kroger, Target, Walmart was so dramatic that Kroger was moving 10% in a day. And our system picked it up to buy right here that morning as it went from 31 to 34, a 10% move in the day. And we got a, a right about a hundred percent move, 91.5 percent why wasn't 100 because it would have been but basically our auto brokers gave us a price on one of our auto brokers that they said was a little bit higher on the entry than what we initially thought so we ended up getting in instead of at 90 
one cents we thought we were getting, we ended up getting an average of 95 cents. Now, what does auto broker mean? It means that you can actually have this, once you become a subscriber, you can have the service auto traded um, by a couple of different brokers and get you in and out automatically where you don't have to even ever watch your email or your screen. It, they would just say, okay, you tell them to fill 10 contracts at a buck or less and or whatever your number is, they'll get you in automatically, they'll get you out automatically based on our entry and exit instructions. So I call out, buy Kroger, get into the April 33 calls up to a buck. We got in at 95 uh, cents, that's $95 a contract. And then you see, we get $1.82 on the way out on this one, that 91%. And then the next day it rolled over and we ended up getting only 10% on the way out of that second half. This is another reason I saw half your position at a double. If you see that it's not continuing to the upside, you need to be flexible enough to say, I'm not gonna hold on and hope it gets back to a double because you get crushed over the next week on that. You say, okay, look, let's go ahead and take uh, preserve our profit. And you see, even with a 10% profit on the second half, you've averaged over a 50% gain on the total position. So in two days, would you take 50% in two days, even if you're shooting for a double, triple, quadruple? Sure, I'll take 50% in two days, no problem. And then wait for the next signal, which you see then happens here about maybe seven or eight days after that. We're getting in here as the stock again takes one of these 32 to $36 surges here. And this time, you know what, we adapted. We said we took our double that next morning, we got into bucks, sold the first half at two bucks the next morning. I said, uh-oh, I don't like what I'm seeing. Intraday, this thing's starting to roll over, kind of like the last time. And basically I said, you know what, I'm not gonna let that slip away this time. We took 92% by midday, that second day in the trade, and glad we did as it shot back down here. We did not get taken out as it moved back into that range bound. Of course, everything got killed into the March 23rd. It was kind of a sell all mentality, and we were glad not to be a part of that. So part of it is knowing when to trade, folks. Part of it is also knowing when not to trade. It's a big part of what we teach you at Big Trends. So ADX, the second leg of the stool, average directional movement. Wells Wilder, the same guy that uh, invented the RSI, Relative Strength Index, oscillator that so many people like to use. Also invented a lot of other things, including the ADX with the directional movement lines. Positive directional movement is called DMI plus. Negative directional movement is called DMI minus. What does that mean? Positive directional movement means how much higher highs you're making. Negative directional movement means how much lower lows you're making. When you're getting more and more positive directional movement and you're getting less and less negative directional movement, what's that called? Higher highs and higher lows is an uptrend, right? That's a positive thing. That's where ADX will be going up when you're getting not a lot of new lows and a lot more new highs. So that's what we wanna find is a trend component and not the range component. Stay away from ranges, especially if you're buying options. Some people like to sell premium when they see ranges develop. I, I'm While I have strategies that can do credit spreads, I'd, I'd much rather do a, a, a credit spread or other kind of uh, non-directional strategy in a trend because you'll get an even better bang for your buck more quickly. So. A lot of ways you can set these trades up. Now, here was one of my favorite trades this year, um, just from the standpoint of how cheap I thought these options were. I've been a big believer in gold for quite a while. Uh, and, you know, of course, now with our government giving away uh, trillions of dollars, basically, to essentially um, prop up the economy, the stock market uh, amid the pandemic, you've got a situation in which you know inflation's coming. In fact, the Fed just told you they want more inflation. They're reversing their decades long policy of trying to quash inflation and saying, we're actually hoping for above average inflation now. So guess what? Not surprising that, uh, that gold sh should do well in that kind of environment. Well, Barrett Gold, you know, Mr. Buffett just turned 90 years old and he just bought a bunch of Barrett Gold. Uh, this was earlier in the year before Buffett bought it. We were buying a calls on gold, March 20 calls uh, on GOLD, Barrett Gold, one of the biggest gold names, 59 cents, 59 bucks a contract. So, you know, even if you were just doing my four contract minimum to do like sell half at a double, half at a triple, uh, one of those four at a triple, the final one at a quadruple, you know, it would cost you less than 240 bucks. Uh, you say, okay, well, in this one, we doubled the, the next day. So you see it going from about, and, and let me just show you on the chart what you should be seeing. First time where it tries to break out here on the, uh, per, on the percent or in red, the CCI and that bluish yellow setup line there, both of those were not confirming by the end of this bar here and back into the trading range. Stay away. So how many times if you see that happening without, say, the benefit of all the other indicators, 
do you say, oh, that's a clear breakout above some highs. I want to buy into that. And then it gaps down on you. You're taking a loss. Uh, well, we don't want that. We want to say, look, it all sets up again. All three of the indicators gave us what we call the setup bar right here at about 19 and a quarter. But I don't buy on the setup bar. I, I buy when it follows through on the, what I call the confirmation bar. That's just over 19 and a half. So we're buying the next morning here at 19 and three quarters. We're buying 20 strike calls out with about, you can see uh, five weeks to go before the expiration and paying just 59 bucks a contract, 59 cents saying, okay, even if this thing just doesn't barely edges up um, to like 20 and a half is our break even 20.59 officially our break even five weeks from now guess what i thought it was going to move a lot more it did it went from 19 and three quarters and by the time we got our final target up here 22 and a half on the stock stock's gone up you can see about 12 percent we're making 289 percent on that second half of our position because we hadn't gotten the 200 percent target when it was about 21 and a half the day before and then that next day it gaps way up and we said cash it all out right off the open and again glad we did as it starts coming back down so this is where you're getting the real-time emails the real-time text alerts to your smartphone from us saying get out now and then wait on that now get into this next one so it's very clear cut when to get in when to get out and it can be set up for auto trade if you're afraid of missing alerts or not have, want, don't want to do the work the broker can do it for you no additional charge versus what you pay on their platform um, so so last piece of the puzzle this big trends bands that i showed you that kind of show me the range or the trend phase outside the bands is basically uh, a takeoff on larry williams percent r percent range indicator so uh, larry's a great trading innovator um, and I, I really, on all these indicators I share with you, I don't have to develop all of them. If it works, I, I like to stand on the shoulders of giants and you should too, to say, hey, how can we make this work for you? Um, that should be your attitude to find the best of the best ideas. This is one where somebody recently was telling me, oh, you left a bunch of money on the table. It went up a lot more after you sold out. Well, you know what? If I get 100, 200, 300% in four days, I don't care what happens after that. You know what? It could keep going. It could not. It really doesn't matter to me. What matters is, like, if you're in retail, you may have heard of the, of the what's called inventory turns, which means how fast can you turn over your merchandise and make money on that profit? So basically, it's the same thing. How fast can I turn this into something else that's a fresher signal and go roll it over into something else that has less risk? It's just kicking off again. So this is really the philosophy I have as well. And also, it's a risk reducer to, to not be so afraid of what if the market it flips on you and goes the other way the next morning without you having sold out. So essentially, if you look at the percent R indicator down below, you see how it's just staying in that top 20% of its readings. That's the 80-20 rule. The top 20% is where you're going to make the best money on uptrends. It's so counterintuitive to what you would expect. You would think overbought's bad, but actually it's very, very good when the institutions want into Baidu here, the Chinese Google, if you will, BIDU, you can see overbought is where the power uptrend occurs. That's what we want. We want it to stay overbought. So, and we want to keep gradually cashing out as it goes. When it's very oversold, watch out below. Um, so this is what we're after here. Now, when we look at that chart of Baidu with all the indicators positioned here, you see the percent R signaling in here, and then it confirmed right after that. Why didn't we buy there? Because we're looking for all of them to confirm. CCI actually signaled that next bar, and then it confirms. So we're buying this next morning open right here. ADX, the kind of the sweet spots when ADX crosses up above a, 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 a low level and just starts turning up uh, above that other directional movement line. That happened like a week and a half before. So you got one, two, three, all legs of the stool now going to give you a much more well-supported trade and we ride it up for those next few days. Sure, we leave a little on the table. I don't worry about that. Um, the idea is it's about taking that money and running in four trading days. Another Baidu example um, where you can see, this is a little different one because the earnings gap was right here. But you can see the other indicators weren't confirming until a little bit after that. The percent R was setting up here. And this is what we call a wedge pattern. When you see this little triangle wedge forming here, some people call it a squeeze. You know, the idea is that something's going to give here. And we see it coming out of that little wedge pattern here with, with the ADX trending up there in green. You can see the percent R going into overbought and CCI just, just about to kick off there. It's like, okay, we want to get a piece of that. The double and triple happens on that first wave up. And then the final piece happens on the sixth trading day where we cash it in. The reason I want to show you this chart too is that, you know what, when we sell our last piece here, the last 300% happens and we get out on the sixth trading day. 
300%, thank you very much. The next day it's down, you feel pretty good. The day after that, you're going, oh no, we could have made more money right here. You're kind of going, oh, I sold it too soon. You take this guessing game out because look at what happens. It stalls and then look at what happens. Big down day, another big down day. You were so glad you have that those uh, profits in your pocket, in your account, and you haven't given them all back and worse yet, turned a winner into a loser. Have you ever done that? I did in the early days of my trading. Now I won't allow it to happen because once you start booking half of a double, you can't lose on that trade. You've guaranteed yourself at minimum a break even, even if the other half of the trade goes to nothing. So you all of a sudden now take certain really bad scenarios off the table by doing trading the right way and taking some of your profits gradually as the market makes them available to you. I don't want to get hung up on the Greeks, but I just share with you that, you know what, my trading's evolved. When I launched Big Trends, it was because I took my profits from the mid to late 90s, had some monster years at the end of the 90s, as a lot of people did. I'm not, I'm not claiming I'm alone in that, but I managed to hang on to them well, and I launched Big Trends in 1999. And then I told people in 2000, I said, watch out below. I said, you know, the, in September 2000, Barron's featured me. And I said, we're headed for a big time correction. You know, we had a two year bear market from there. Uh, we bounced after the 9-11 bottom into early 2002. I told people, watch out again. We're going to go down again on another Barron's interview. And they indeed market tank back down to new lows. The point being that my trading's evolved. I, I started big trends by focusing on high delta options, kind of what I call stock substitutes. But as I've learned more and more about the right way to get maximum leverage for folks that want to get more aggressive growth in your options trading, gamma is where you want to focus. It's the rate of change in delta that actually will make you money faster than just looking at how high your delta is or isn't. What does that mean? It just means that typically as an option goes from out of the money to at the money to somewhat in the money, that's where your gamma is the highest. That's where you'll pick up deltas the fastest. So what that means is that your option is going to explode in value if you catch these trends correctly and quickly. Now, here's what I want to show you about the five-day time stop rule. This is Morgan Stanley, not your typical high-tech, uh, high-volatility name that you think you got to trade. You don't have to trade those names. What you have to do is find the ones that look like they're really primed for a continuation of a big move. So we've got our percent R and it's confirming the next day. We've got our CCI, it's confirming. Didn't show you the ADX, but it's, go it's going fine as well. So everything's confirmed at the close of that bar. So I'm buying in here that next morning's open. And notice I'm initially quite wrong. We, we see this buy signal happen here, about 47 bucks in the stock, uh, and we're buying a June 49 call. That's happening in late May. We've got about three and a half weeks before the expiration. And, and we're saying we need this to move typically pretty quickly. I'm going to talk about where I will not hold an option, how close to expiration in my next slide. But we bought the, the 90, uh, sorry, 49 calls in the middle of third Friday of June expiration for 95 cents. That's 95 bucks a contract. So again, if you're putting in, say, 1000 bucks a trade, you get 10 contracts there. Well, in this case, initially, I was down more than half after two days. Most people would say, there's no way I would put a, a stop any lower than minus 50%. Our experience is if you do that, you're going to see, you say you're out here at minus 50, minus 55, minus 60%. And you know what? Then it goes up big time over the coming week. And, and count it out with me. If you count out here the first day in the trade, second day in the trade, third day in the trade, fourth, and then our fifth day in the trade, fifth day, we're, we're basically right back to where we got in here. So we're like, okay, it's crunch time for this trade. If it finishes negative on us in any future day, we're out of the trade. Sixth day, you can see we're well up. Seventh day, we're getting out of the trade at our profits. So when it gapped up, the stock had popped back up to 48, and then the next morning opened at 51 bucks. So those options now that we bought for 95 cents were going up here. You can see into the neighborhood of our, it was kind of interesting the way it happened where it hit, we took part out at 247, part at 224, and our final piece on a trailing stop at 146% gain. It combined at a 220% profit in seven trading days. If you were out at minus 60, you gave up 280 percentage points of profit from minus 60 up to plus 220. That's why I always tell people, look, it's sure we're gonna have times where we're down 50, 60, maybe even more on a given trade after five days, it happens. But the point is, you know what? You gotta give it a chance because what you're trying to pick up is that institutional activity says they know something. 
Now, what do they know? I, I don't know what they know. I don't, I don't have, I don't claim to have an insider scoop on what, what fundamental data they're looking at. But what I know is that there's probably another leg of that move coming. And so the, the point being that, okay, sure, they might even have to ride out a little bit of a dip after that first big wave of accumulation there. The point being that, you know, the structure of that chart's still good. Uh, and, and we stay with it for that 220% gain overall. Now, I mentioned about how far I'll, I will buy and how, for, how I won't hold past a certain point. A lot of people look at this time decay chart, what's called the theta chart, T for time, T for theta, if you're wondering how to remember that. Um, and they would say, well, gee, don't you want to buy options way out here where you get not much decay in the first, in that 30 day block compared to the last 30 days where you get a ton of decay? And I've experienced that, you know what, somewhere here between the 45th day down to the 30th day is about the sweet spot for getting into a trade. So 40, 45 days before the expiration, that's like, you know, five or six weeks before, going down to about 30 days, about four weeks before, that's, that's where I wanna be for entering a trade. Why? Because with a five day time stop, if you have a five day hold and then you get knocked out of the trade, you've only lost that little bit of time. It's a little more than 120 days out. Why will I not buy 120 days out? You will pay so much more in total premium, it will kill your leverage. It will kill your ability to get a quadruple or even a double or a triple oftentimes. So our experience is, you know what, we're gonna use the five day time stop and if we're not getting uh, what we need out of a trade, we'll blow it out and move on to the next one. Where I will not hold a trade is in the 14 days or less. The last two weeks of expiration, don't mess with those. There's too much decay there. Exit out. Even if I'm in a trade that's winning with 14 days left, I blow out the trade. I don't want to mess with those last two weeks before expiration. So, you know, we're coming up as of tomorrow on two weeks before the September 18th monthly expiration. So after tomorrow, I'm, I'm and even now, I'm really focused on October, the third Friday in October options now for our new trades, not messing with uh, September options anymore. Now, Here's, here's an interesting one, Zoom. You know, Zoom just had those great earnings. Sure, it's getting pounded today, but it was up 40% the other day post earnings. And you know, the great thing about this is you look at this and say, okay, how do you buy options on Zoom? I don't like to buy breakouts on those kind of wild and crazy stocks like Zoom. What I like to do is buy what I call retest. And a retest, this is where the CCI, for example, in yellow came back and tested under its key line right here. This was happening back in early April. And you notice as that happened, it was also scraping down to my lower big trends band in black there. And I told my subscribers right here, this is a make or break time for Zoom. It should bounce off of the support. One of my subscribers immediately after I sent out the trade to buy Zoom 200 strike calls at a buck, you say, hold on, the stock's at 115 and you're buying 200 strike calls on Zoom and you're having to pay a hundred bucks a contract. I'm going, yeah, because these could be worth a lot if this thing flips back up towards the old highs near 150, which you see, that's what happened. Remember, count out five days. One of my subscribers said, you're crazy. Uh, they just had bad news. I said, that's the opportunity. Buying bad news on a longer term uptrending stock is usually a pretty good rule of thumb. One, two, three, four, and five days later, we're already at our double and our triple target. So, so we get 101 and then 200% on the, uh, and you can see on, on the sixth and seventh day in the trade and basically saying, okay, look, at that point, this next day, when it's stalling up into these bands here, I'm going, this isn't worth the risk of me holding anymore. We've got to take 117% on our final quarter of our position because it's just, it's just concerning me about, okay, can we get through there? You see for the next few days, it's a good idea. Then it looks like it's breaking out again and then it settled back down. So you can see that essentially it's one of those that there's a little different trade, but I like to buy retests, especially on those high volatility names. We're getting some retests today. I think it's gonna open us up for a new trade come tomorrow morning for our Grand Slam subscribers. What kind of stocks do we like to trade here? It's most of the big name uh, leaders in the market. You know, And it's not just tech. It's not just Alibaba. It's not just Microsoft or the FANG names. It's also names like MasterCard and Visa. You know, um, it's also names like even the casino stocks. Right now, we're not trading casino stocks. Uh, it's tough on the reopening on some of those. But bottom line is we could trade them on the downside if we get another pandemic wave where things further shut down. We're going to watch the charts. We watch gold. We watch oil, which is a lot of different things. One of the other interesting things that I do um, that a lot of options traders don't look at is not just the stock chart to look at, but what about the option that you're going to actually be trading, the one that you want to buy? Is it performing or not? Why should you care? Because an option is a totally different animal than a stock. You and I know that an option is a time limited asset. If you buy Apple stock, it's gonna last longer than you, me, and a lot of other people with all the cash they have on hand on this earth, right? They're gonna be around for a long time as a stock. 
That doesn't mean they're going to always be a great stock. The point being, though, it's going to exist. If you buy a one-month option on Apple, you've got 30 days to make something happen or else that option hits its expiration date. Um, same with volatility. Volatility pricing is very important in the pricing of options, and it's not really priced into the stock that you buy, but it is priced into the option you have to pay for. So we want to avoid as much of that decay as possible and make the option chart show us that we're getting that good movement. A, a while ago now, Microsoft's been a favorite of ours for a long time. We bought a Microsoft uh, back uh, when it was trading here, you can see about 77 bucks. It had all the percent R, CCI, ADX things working for it. ADX came on a little later here. We said, okay, get on board Microsoft 80 calls. We only paid 55 bucks a contract to control uh, the stock at 80, $8,000 worth of stock basically um, for 55 bucks, right? So that's some true leverage potential, like 150 to one practically. We say in, in about a week, six trading days, it was up to double. We sold half at a double. Now this is the only time folks that I will hold one of these situations into an earnings report where we've got a free trade. And we say, look, the charts have flatlined right before the earnings. We say, look, the, the worst thing happens and it gaps down we're gonna break even on this trade. If the best thing happens, it gaps up, we're gonna make a lot of money really fast. You see, when it gapped up five bucks on the earnings, we sold out that other half up 756%. That's you know, where you can really hit the true Grand Slam home runs, sold the other half up there right off the open and said, thank you very much. The option chart was showing the same bullish profile. In fact, right before we sold half at a double, it was breaking out. We said, look, we're selling half at a double. We still like this one, but it's already confirming an upside breakout. And there's our percent R retest. It was right around a buck. It's hanging around a buck. And we're like, this is worthy of being held into the earnings. And then we sold it right there at $4.71 right after the earnings. You don't worry that it went to six intraday. It came back to three a couple of days later. So the point being, take that money and run to the next one. So when you're looking at how to build a successful, aggressive options growth strategy, you want to have that gamma really boosting your your leverage when that option goes from out of the money to in the money. Option charts help confirm that. And we've got about actually now about 60 stocks that we follow on this. Uh, so we keep adding more stocks into the mix, but they're pretty much your high volume, high growth leaders on the way up and the way down. What about the downside? Here's one with Alibaba where you can see the, the percent of the CCI were already breaking down and confirming ADX was coming on board. And we said, we got to get into a bearish play right in here as the thing rallied back up uh, near the end of the day. Next morning, it gaps down. We saw half of a double. And you say, this is a 140 strike put when the stock's trading about 160, then 155. So you see, it's got to move really fast to make money. So when it starts to turn the other way, we were up about 150%, but then it turned this way back up. And we said, get out, take the six and be done with it. And you see it just chopped around after that. So you've got to, on puts especially, you've got to be in and hit it quick. And if it doesn't get going quick, you got to blow them out quickly. GM, we kind of gave it that five days. Um, this is right off the pandemic bottom here. You know, the market bottomed here on March 23rd, right? We said, well, this first bounce, probably the laggers like GM are going to be a pretty good sale when they're going out of cars and into selling ventilators. You know, the car business not doing too well at that point. And the point being, you can see what happens. We bought those options for a buck. And we sold them out at a buck and a half when it came back to the support line here. It was just not moving fast enough. And we were glad to just take 50% and be done with it. So when we think about some of the keys to being successful with this kind of grand slam, more aggressive option strategy, first of all, you've got to have a catalyst. Now, for a lot of people that say they want a fundamental catalyst, it could be earnings. A lot of times earnings is a big driver of where we want to get into something where the institutions are going to have to make a, a shift to start buying more of something that's got a new good earnings profile or worse yet is flipping around and now has a negative earnings profile where they now have to unwind a position. So that's where you can see some pretty dramatic movement after earnings reports. So we don't just have to catch the earnings gap. We actually prefer to kind of let that earnings gap shake out a little bit and then let us focus on that. Volume surges will also show you some of that. We can see that especially in the options volume surging. Like that's one of the AMD examples that started off the presentation with was picked up because it was popping up onto the most active options volume list for the prior two days before. I told you that, guess what? Institutions are greedy just like everybody else. They don't just want to buy the stock that they know is going to have good news. They want to make some money on it in options themselves too. So you'll see the options really perk up on a lot of these and that you want to see that confirmed breakout with the indicators telling the tale, not with what you think is just a price action breakout, which might turn into a real fake out. We like to buy the out of the money options a buck or less. You're never going to buy them in the money when you're paying a buck or less on these names. And sometimes you're going to go, have to go pretty far out of the money. Sometimes it might be 10, 15, even 20% out of the money. But the key is 
do you get the speed of movement where that gamma can go from out of the money to at the money and hit those really big home runs? The time stop is one of the big breakthrough concepts here that, you know, I bet a lot of people are just telling you how, what their price stop is throughout the presentations here. But the time stop is what avoid you getting shaken out of what's going to be a volatile instrument. Let's face it. You know, we showed you on Morgan Stanley, it was down 65% in two days and it turned into plus 220 on the total position. So you've got to have that staying power to say, okay, as long as you're not compounding all your gains and, and loading the boat into the next trade, I don't recommend pyramiding. It's, it's all about being very gradual in how you invest your, your money over time. We can get that 100, 200, 300% into gaps, but this is key right here invest and in whatever capital you put towards trading the service five to ten percent of it going into any new trade so no matter how well you're doing you know that you're you're going to have a, a nice contribution of that think about it. if you put ten percent uh for example you put a ten thousand dollar trading portfolio just say i'll try this out start with a thousand bucks a trade for example well you know what that's not going to make or break you but the idea is you know what if we take your typical um 100 200 300 percent target you're pushing a thousand dollars and turning it into almost three. Uh, um, you know, so you're making you know something like uh, seventeen hundred bucks over the next uh, over that over that thousand bucks. So, so you say, okay, if I can make you know a nice quick 150, 175, 200 percent on my on my portfolio, then you're talking about uh, uh, that's making you like in the neighborhood of fifteen or twenty percent on an annualized basis off of just one successful trade that hits all these targets. So that's the kind of thing that makes most people's year in just one trade. So that's what we're about. And it's not a black box system. Once you become a subscriber, you get weekly video training, you get the fact sheets that tell you exactly how to um, make this work for you and follow along at home. So now if you came in late, like I said, I don't usually like to talk about past performance because I don't want to set your expectations that it has to be this. It could be this. It could be less. It could be more uh, than the rate of pace that we've been able to enjoy in our model portfolio since inception at the beginning of 2017. This is saying no more than a thousand bucks in any one trade, including all winners and losers um, and taking 10,000 into more than 40,000 uh, before commissions. Like I said, a typical 10 lot these days might cost you like six and a half bucks on a commission. So basically you keep most all of what you earn these days and the point being that usually you'd have to when you go to the special uh, link that I set up for you you'd have to pay at least a thousand bucks for a 12-month access this was the best recent special I did for my subscribers I'm going to do you one better today to give you a chance to try it out for 30 days and kick the tires if you will see it for yourself and and then see if, if you want to continue on I think you're going to so basically that's why I'm willing to do it because I know it's going to fill the bucket with a lot of people who want to take advantage of this special link members.bigtrends.com slash slam before I go into answer questions, I want to also say, look, let me um, let me just show you what this page should look like when you get to it. It's it's not a www page. It's members.bigtrends.com slash slam. Uh, when you go to that page, this is what you're going to see. It's going to set you up with not a bunch of text. You know, basically, if, if this is for you to try it out for 30 days for just 47 bucks. This is a, usually my monthly uh, charge is 147 at best. So basically, you try it out for a month for 47. If you like it, it'll rebuild in 30 days for 147 each and every 30 days. And that's still a great value versus people that pay many thousands on my site. So basically, all you do is you hit the green checkout button, fill in your information. I'm not going to go through all that. The one thing I will mention is that if you say, okay, you saw it with me on a webinar or whatever, uh, that if you want to get the text alerts in the customer note field, do type the text alerts to whatever your number is, whatever provider you use, Sprint, AT&T, Verizon, whatever. Uh, review the terms and conditions, click on the checkbox, boom, submit order. You're gonna get 30 days access for 47 bucks. That should give you uh, typically uh, six to eight trades a month. We don't hyper trade. We wanna find those big opportunities and have you have the chance to turn 47 bucks into thousands of profit and that'll make you a very happy subscriber to stay with it for a long time. Uh, before um, I go, I wanna see if we had any questions, Raleigh or anybody wanna share with me what I might've missed to help answer some questions along the way. Appreciate sure, you having me, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, once again, Price, great pre presentation and I've been making some notes of the questions that they've come by and I think you just answered the most recent one which was how many alerts will we get per month and I think you said six per eight. Yeah six to eight that's right. Uh, other questions more like from the basic side because this has come up with other with other presenters that have been talking about options you know what kind of option proficiency should somebody have to consider taking this course? 
Yeah, so basically, we keep it incredibly simple, Raleigh. I'm always a big believer in the KISS principle. The, the simpler that I can keep things, usually the better that I do in my trading. The more complex I make it, the worse I do. So basically, <laughs> it's, just, it's just amazing how that works. So we keep it really simple. We say, buy this option at this price. Sell this option, the same option, at this price. There's no spreads here. It's just simple buy of a call, simple buy of a put. And when it's time to get out, we say, close it down, shut it down at this profit or this loss, and move on to the next one. So it's it really actually, we call it read it your broker instructions that you don't have to do anything if you set up the auto trade with one of the two dedicated auto trade brokers um you can they can call our 800 big trends number if they want to get more information on auto trading oh, but basically okay. then they they'll execute it for the subscriber with no intervention required except you just say this is oh, i like this i want to add more money to it it's not for me i want to stop the auto trade that's up to the customer to turn it on turn it off once they're a paying verified subscriber so it's it's a great vehicle for people to not even have to worry about knowing options or worse yet missing alert because you're busy during the day you, you you're doing something else oh you missed a, a one that went on to quadruple yeah that's where people get upset and they go get me on that auto trade thing i don't want to miss any more of those big gainers <laughs> that's a great point and uh and i know that uh, there were some questions that came up a little bit earlier about how do you scan for stocks but i think you also answered that and that you have about a basket of about 40 stocks that you take a look at you say it yep. might grow to 60 or so it's so, up to about 60 now yeah it's up to about six so for you know, you showed, and many times you showed your charts as part of the kind of technical analysis that you do. Um, is that something that's required? I mean, is there, are there special charting pa uh, pa uh, platform that's required to take advantage of? Uh, Absolutely not. No, they don't have to have any access to it. I mean, they can add that. We've got a toolkit that they can learn all these te techniques and get the scans that say it's time to buy puts on Baba or calls on Apple or whatever. But basically, we just call it out like, Time to buy this, time to sell that. It's very clean cut. And then if more, if you're more of a do it do it yourself for folks, then you can always inquire at our 800 Big Trends toll free line and say, okay, I'd like to add that toolkit to see everything that Price sees all day, every day. And, and my team, I, frankly, if I didn't have a, a great team of other analysts and, and team members helping me, it would be very hard to do all this myself. So I'm, I've been blessed to have a fantastic team at Big Trends so that it's multiple sets of eyes on this, uh, on, on what's our next buy signal, what's our next exit, how do we execute it, how do we send a new email to get in, send a new email to get out. One of the things I've prided myself on too, Raleigh, for now being in business for 21 years is that uh, we never leave subscribers hanging. We don't just throw stuff out there and forget about it. We, we talk about w losers as well as winners and we tell you, hey, this one's not working. It's time to go on it. We, we pull the plug, move on. So you never have to wonder, what do I do with the trade, uh, whether it's working or not. Oh, that's great. And it's nice that you have that because I can see where some people would work with the alerts. I know that some people have, they're just the personality that says, hey, I got the alert. I'd like to check the stock out for myself. I know that things like percentage R, CCI, and ADEX and ADX are things that can be easily plotted on any chart. Yep. Um, but uh, if they'd like to get your, I think what you called it, uh, with the, the big trend rule bands. Sheet. Yeah, the yeah, big trends the bands, the rule sheet. So basically when, when you sign up, basically you get to take advantage of that rule sheet, even if at 47 bucks. I mean, that's something a lot of times I wouldn't give away for that little, but basically the idea being that, you know what, it's really so powerful and we're already getting just a ton of great response. So I want to say thank you to Rajesh uh, out in Missouri. Uh, I know you're going to love getting the rule sheet, the access, all that stuff, as well as uh, a bunch more coming in. Uh, Don from up in Connecticut. Uh, definitely, you know, you're going to get uh, also the constant training. So it's a, we call it learn while you earn, Raleigh. It's a big part of the Big Trends philosophy. And just like you all are doing here, education is, is critical. You must be well-educated and you can't stop in your education. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny how you always want to be what I call green and growing in this game. Right. You never want to think you've got it all figured out. That's usually where you've got big problems ahead because we always want to stay very sharp and very focused on risk management. And that's what's allowed me to stay in the trading game for 30 plus years. No, and I think those are keys. And you know what, it's so, it's interesting. It's such great advice. And it's amazing to me how so few people really have the discipline to follow that. I mean, I wrote some things down that you said as you were talking about it. And that was like, you know, guys, there's nothing wrong with starting small, you know, building up confidence in what you're doing and then scale up. But it yep. takes discipline and it takes, you know, to be able to do that conquering fear. You know, yes. that comes with confidence, et cetera. And these are all hallmark, hallmark folks of what Price has shared with us. And you've been in the industry for a long time. You've said you've evolved as a trader and you're just sharing those techniques with the rest of us. Absolutely. I don't have to go back and experience 30 years to get advantage, to take advantage 
of what Price can share with us today. Let me just scan my notes here, so, uh, see if there's anything else that I picked up here. Mm, bah, 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 what are the bands? Uh, is it suitable for day trading? I think that somebody picked up just by looking at it, but it's 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 not. I mean, it's not what we're doing. I mean, I, we do have people who say they have adapted it to that, Raleigh. So once you learn the method, you can actually start to apply it on shorter term time frames, like a day or two. Sure. My philosophy is that it's it's more about okay. A lot of people are more afraid of missing out on something that they're like, okay, they're working a day job. Job. They're they're basically a busy or busy, you know, enjoying retired life, playing golf or doing other things, or maybe just have to make a trip to the grocery store or something. And oh no, I missed a trade. Oh no, it's already double. What do I do now? So uh, so anyway, and just getting a ton of great response here, Jean Marc out of Texas. I know you're going to love it. Uh, so we're just and and basically, we're not going to keep this out there forever because it's basically a too low of a price, frankly. But I wanted to say do it as a thank you to all of you all uh, that have, have set this up because you've been so good to me. I, I, I love just seeing people, the light bulb moment gone. We're like, oh, overbought's not bad. It's actually really powerfully good if you <laughs> see the right powerful setup here. So that's that's an eye opener for a lot of people, Raleigh. A lot of people have kind of been trained in kind of a standard uh, thinking of overbought bad, uh, oversold good. And it's kind of the exact opposite on the best moves. We've all seen it with Apple, Tesla, all these monster moves that have been overbought, stayed overbought, and been just absolute monster winners out there and then your goal is, is if you want to get the growth part of your portfolio in play folks this is how to do it is you turbocharge it not with a ton of your of your cash take us like Raleigh said take a small piece try it out at 47 bucks to try it for 30 days even if you just watch it and, and gain some confidence in it that's really what it's about is is kind of opening your eyes to what you've been missing all these years and these overbought situations that just keep going and get you participating in them rather than watching from the sidelines absolutely and in price, one of the first speakers that we had a couple of days ago was Ryan Jones, and he was just mm -hmm. talking about the power of compounding, yes. you know, and how important that is to your trading plan. And that's something, once again, you apply that with what price is talking about now, and it's amazing what that can do for your account. Price, one last question, and I've been asking every presenter this question, and that is that we know that the past six months have been very interesting in the markets because of COVID. And now we have an election that's coming up. If you just take a moment and just go forward a little bit, any thoughts or advice or concerns that you have about being a retail trader as we're heading into the election? I think there's been, you know, a, a lot of noise out there for a long time, Raleigh. And I think that it's become more clear over the current uh, president's term than ever before that th there's a lot of noise if you read it folks it will steer you wrong and i think what you have to learn as a trader is don't trade what you've been what you've been taught to believe from all the things you read in the press from all the things you hear on the tv trade what you see trade what's in front of you trade what's happening now and that's really what i think makes you a better trader because you're you're not you're not putting biases on it you're saying that's what i love about technical analysis raleigh it's just so yeah. clean and so right in front of you there's no more guesswork about oh it's prices too high oh it's uh you know pe ratios too too rich it's like hey if it's working you, you stay with it if it stops working if it violates our retest parameters we get out no questions asked so then it just becomes your job to just cleanly execute your system your method and and that's what a lot of people think is that this is just a mad market where Main Street's having so much trouble. Wall Street's at new highs. There's never been a greater disconnect between the two. And my point would be, as a trader, your job is to take advantage of what's in front of you. And if you're missing that, then you're basically missing some of the best trading opportunities I've seen since probably the late 90s. Uh, and, that's, and that's when I made so much so fast to launch my company, having done it for somebody else for most of the 90s. I was like, it's time for me to start showing folks this new way to trade the big trends way. So for me, it's just I don't want to take up our guests next time, but it's really phenomenal time to be trading and I, and I wish all of you to stay safe stay well and trade well with methods like what you've learned here from me well that's terrific and price once again thank you so much for your time today uh, for preparing that presentation and for sharing it with us we know that you're a busy guy it was wonderful having you nice talking to you again have a great day my friend all the best raleigh pat nikki jeanette everybody was here thank you all so much Outstanding. Well, what another great presentation, folks. Uh, 24 speakers we have lined up, and we have two more left at the end of this three-day event, which has just been fantastic. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow, Pat. 
Nikki, yeah. I think we just need to get eight more people lined up and let's get, let's keep going. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I've got Price's slide up here with big trends. He gave us a great presentation and just want to remind everyone the special offer Grand Slam options. You know, you're going to get up to eight simple call or put option trades per month. He said six to eight. Uh, you're going to get real-time intraday alerts and new trading opportunities, weekly video analysis updates every Monday evening. And as he said, he doesn't leave any of his members hanging. And if you want to take advantage of that special offer that he has, $47 a month for that, I guess for the first month, to kick the tires and try it out, go to members.bigtrends.com forward slash slam and go ahead and check that out. So, 